even like? <laughs> he does, I think. In the event that some man across the sea pushes that big red button, we must be prepared to protect the things that matter to this beautiful country. The unprepared will be wiped out faster than a speeding bullet. And today we will be talking about something far bigger than a bullet. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. We will be talking about the most deadly weapons on the planet. Today we will be talking about the atomic bomb and how you can protect yourself from them. Hello, my name is Luke Boys, and I am a senior at Etude High School. And I'm Alex Burke, also a senior at Etude. And we're here to talk to you about nukes and how you can keep yourself safe from them with our product. But what is an atomic bomb, I hear you asking? Well, boy, how do we have all the information that you need? So I'll bet you've probably convinced yourself that nuclear science is beyond you. Most people do this. But in reality, the science behind the nuclear bomb isn't very complicated at all. It's so simple, even I can understand it. First things first, there's not one, but two types of bombs out there. Fission and fusion. Let's start with fission. This reaction involves splitting atoms apart, either uranium-235 or plutonium-239. This starts a chain reaction inside the bomb that expands outwards and causes the blast. And the other type of bomb... Fusion. Fusion works as the name entails by combining atoms. It's the process that keeps our sun glowing bright each and every day. Specifically, you create points of such intense heat that, uh, that the fusion reaction can occur. Hydrogen is the easiest element to fuse, and it is also very abundant. The only way we can actually create the proper environment for fusion to occur on Earth is at the point of, de uh, the point of detonation for a regular fission bomb. And all the radioactive material that doesn't get used up in either of these reactions get blasted up and outwards in the form of fallout. Now, fallout is what our product line is designed to truly protect against. Simply put, Despite our best research efforts, there is no way to stop the direct blast of an atomic bomb. At the point of detonation, the temperature temporarily spikes to over 270 million degrees Fahrenheit, or 10 times hotter than the center of the sun. There is no currently existing material that can even get close to understand to taking that level of heat. So instead, we focus, uh, we focus our efforts on stopping the other effects of nuclear war, namely, Fallout. So what actually is fallout? As we said before, fallout is the remaining radioactive material that doesn't get used up in these reactions. And the force of the blast kicks all this material up into the atmosphere as a gray, dusty substance. This substance falls back to Earth over the course of several weeks and starts polluting everything it touches. So how does one stop this deadly poison? Simple. Walls. Lots and lots of walls. Thick walls. Specifically, many half-value layers thick. What's a half-value layer, you ask? It's how much of any, of any material you need to cut the energy from radiation in half. As an example, if the source of the radiation is the element iridium-192, you would need 4.8 millimeters of lead in order to cut its radiation in half. Another 4.8 millimeters will lower it to half of that. So 0 0.25 and down to 0 0.125, and then down, so on, and so on. Another critical thing when it comes to bunker design is atmospherics. See, humans make a lot of waste heat. So much that within a few weeks it will be very uncomfortable, and a few more flat out deadly. So we have included a series of vents to shelter the wet. Now, I'll bet you're wondering how we stop that nasty, nasty fallout from getting into our vents. Through our extensive research, we have determined that in order to stop fallout from getting in, you don't actually need filters. You see, the thing about fallout is that it's bonded to dust particles. Dust, you see, tends to get stuck on things. Our filtration me mechanism for radioactive fallout is simply a series of 90 degree turns within the vents leading into the shelter. The irradiated dust will get caught in the turns, sticking and not entering the shelter proper. Now that we know what that is, we can focus on what you need to stay kicking. That being our product, the Bergen Boys family brand of bunker line. Perfect for a family of four. Our stylish designs can support people for a suitable time for society to recover or collapse. 
Just don't go spending 200 years in there. <laughs> yes, with packages ranging from the cheapskate to the pinnacle. Let's talk about a few of those, shall we? The family bunker. Hold up. Next slide. There we go. There we go. <laughs> The family bunker we have shown right here is the Cheapskate package, a 40 by 10 foot model that is under that is installed under the house in place of the basement, with two bedrooms that both 93 square feet and a 25 square foot bathroom, and last but not least, a 198 square foot living area with a small kitchen area that will be used to prepare the food that you will need. You're going to be getting those yourself, as well as a power generation and water supply. But I think that these fine investors and consumers are interested in something a little bit higher standard. And by that we mean... <clears throat> the Pinnacle! <laughs> the 36 by 46 model that's big enough to safely and comfortably house a family of four, with its three 11 by 9 bedrooms and an 8 by 8 bathroom, 25 by 9 generator and water care room, as well as the storage units, that's 29 feet by 9 feet. That, that's 275 feet of canned food, first aid supplies, and anything that you'd need to stay alive down there. Now that we've covered a few of our designs and what goes into them, let's finish off with some quick tips on surviving the inevitable post-apocalyptic wasteland. First, and probably most consequential, nuclear winter. Nuclear explosions create a lot of ash. And this ash gets kicked up by the explosion. Kicked up into the atmosphere. You see, ash is very good at blocking sunlight. And what does sunlight carry? That's right, heat. This loss of heat will cause drastic losses in temperature across the world. And um, this would be dangerous not only to humans, but to plants as well. The dramatic loss in temperature combined with the lack of light will cause mass plant death across the world. This ecological disaster along with the complete collapse of international trade, will lead to mass famine. This lack, uh, this, um, lack of food may cause some desperate survivors to resort to desperate measures. Slide. So remember, you see any of yellowing eyes? Well, stay away. After all, nobody wants to become Raider Chow. Make sure to keep a Geiger counter on you at all times. You start hearing that notorious click, click, click? Hurry up your scavenging. Who knows what nasty mutations you can get by staying out there for too long. Eh, yeah, sadly, radiation won't turn you into some immortal undead zombie. Nope, you'll just, you'll just get very sick and die. This concludes our tip and our presentation. <laughs> so we will be doing a um, we'll be doing a ladder of feedback on our presentation and our topic. So I guess we'll start off with values. Yes, I don't know your name. Yes. Okay. Uh, my name is Hunter, and um, well, this was deep, and dear God, now the anxiety is running through my brain, my veins, much like the atomic annihilation of our world. But I have a feeling, it's just a small feeling, to use just a little bit of this to talk a little bit about like Fallout the game. Like you had. All oh yeah, those, totally. Um, pointers towards that. Mm, gee, I don't know what you're talking about. Buddy. <laughs> sure, <laughs> you're sure it isn't the, the radiation messing with your brain a little oh, bit? Oh boy. I have one thing to say. What? Shut up and take my money. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take the pinnacle. Why, thank you, sir. He needs a job, he'll take the money. <laughs> Actually, the only one here is actually I'm actually the only person in this group who actually played a Fallout game. Yep. But I will say that we are still more focused on actual science here, unlike those uh, those fools over at Vault Tech. You know, their propaganda says that their that their vault door could stop a bomb. 
Like, no, that's not gonna happen. We explained why that's not gonna happen. You can't stop something that hot. What are some common misconceptions with reality and that silly old game? And then follow up four. Well, I guess, yeah, there's the number one misconception, like I actually mentioned it before, of what, muta of what like, radiation poisoning and mutations do to you. Um, you know, a lot of games, especially, you know, key example of Fallout will show, oh yeah, you'll get these superpowers. No, in reality, you'll just feel very sick and possibly get cancer and then die. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes? I just love the way you presented this, the, the sales pitch and uh, entrepreneurs that you two are just hilarious. Why, thank you. <laughs> so I'm thinking of getting a shelter for three. <laughs> wow! wow. Okay. <laughs> so um, if, if I'm looking at getting a shelter for three, how much food do you think I would need in order for for myself and two other people in my family would would need in order to uh, in order to survive for say about six months well given i actually did a little bit of research into this on average uh, the in this current setting the typical american citizen eats around 1000 pounds of food each month i'd say that you can definitely cut that down okay. to being 500 per pounds per month and and another key thing with our design is that you're not meant to stay in them forever right. until the fallout has subsided because these are meant to be shelters that are put underneath people's homes you can't store 30 years worth of food in uh, like underneath someone's home but without a lot of investment and well money that most people won't be willing to spend mm -hmm. so you will need to go to the surface Eventually. I did not say which, I said three, I did not say which three, just by the way. Well, thank you. <laughs> but that also still makes me concerned. <laughs> yes. <laughs> stuff of the, the old uh, like 1960s, 1950s era of duck and cover, that is a purely propaganda. That will a, not help you whatsoever. Yeah, if you are within the blast radius of the bomb, you're pretty much as good as dead. Um, the only times when duck and cover is actually relevant is if you are way further away from the bomb. Of you know, Ducking and cover just makes you smaller, so there's less chance that shrapnel caused from the shockwave will, you know, shred you. Asleep? Uh, how far would it need to be to be safe from the immediate effects of uh, detonation? Well, immediate effects, if we're covering just the fireball itself, the area, like the actual fireball of a standard, like modern nuclear bomb is around like two kilometers in radius. So that's around, uh, conversion of miles, that's around like 1.3 miles, I think. Um, and the in an area around that, around 13 kilometers in diameter, everything will be just set on fire by the heat. Outside from that, you won't instantly be burned, but that's when the shockwave will start to become relevant. The shockwave can go out for around like 30 more kilometers before finally stopping. At least on most modern bombs, there are special cases. Yes. <laughs> well, the bridge might keep you somewhat safe from a shrapnel, but it still might get knocked around a lot. Yeah, it'll get knocked around and then you bash your head against the walls and get a concussion. Oh, no! <laughs> I, I don't care how good of an archaeologist you are, you can't survive a nuke in a fridge. <laughs> yes?
two kids. We 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 roughly just went with like the the, the nuclear family of oh, an average of oh, family. Family. And as for expansion into businesses, these were meant to, these were purpose built just to be for home like for home design stuff. Um, like designs that would be involved that actually for businesses would be obviously a lot larger because well, one they have more money, two they have more space. Tim? Oh yeah, yeah, I made the animations. So uh, if you want to go back to some of the animations, Abby. You made Yeah, I made um, all of these pixely animations for this. Wow. Yeah. Yes. Um, how much would it be if I tried to buy uh, a pinnacle with uh, another pinnacle connected? It. Oh my god. Oh. The price range has not been given back to us by marketing. And um, <laughs> <laughs> turn, uh, um, the other two rooms into more food storage. Oh my you know, god. Honestly, you definitely oh, could do no. that. <laughs> yeah, I need to stay yeah, I mean, if you don't have that many people, I'd recommend doing it, mm -hmm. honestly. Yeah, really. Yes. yes. I don't know if you, yeah, I don't know if you want to be giving your dogs walks when the fallout is when there's like black rain in the fall. <laughs> Yay! My my pet yes. gecko is a gecko. Um, well, actually, the thing about um, when a, when a nuclear plant goes uh, goes up, not a nuclear bomb. They are significantly more dangerous when it comes to radioactive fallout because they use different radioactive isotopes in their in their operation. So the radioactive fallout from a nuclear bomb going off will typically have dissipated to safe levels within about 30 years. But inside, as an example, the Chernobyl nuclear plant, it's going to be millions of years until it is lowered to a safe enough level. So there's going to be a lot more danger involved if a nuclear plant goes up. How does an RBM reactor core explode? Do that. Uh, human error. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Is it true that a cockroach could actually survive the nuclear fallout? Uh, well, I mean, anything can survive nuclear fallout depending on the exposure. The reason why, like, the, the thing of cockroaches surviving nuclear war is largely just. It's it's talking about the fact that just cockroaches are just really hard to kill in general. Like you can literally cut off their heads and they'll be alive for a few weeks and then they'll die because they starve, not because they don't have a head. Um, yes. Uh, you use your thumb to see if you're in a safe area. No, you cannot. That, that that well, it still has some relevance. Just saying is, uh, is saying if you're far enough away, but you still should keep moving away anyways. Because even it's like, oh yeah, yeah, the blast is smaller than my thumb. I should be safe. Not keep walking. Uh, for, yeah, first of all, the shockwave. Second of all, the fallout will spread out much further than the blast. Um, as as a good example, if a nuclear war were to break out, it's pretty unlikely that Sheboygan would be hit because we're tiny. We're only like forty eight thousand people. But uh, it is likely that something like Milwaukee would get hit, and then that radioactive fallout would get pushed northward by the wind onto us. And well, we are out of time though. So thank you very much.